Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a recreation of one of my favourite gaming PCs. It features the Intel Core i5-8400, a GTX 1070 and 16 gigs of dual channel, 3200MHz RAM. My first experience with a 1070 came back in December 2017 when MSI sent me this Aero ITX model. At the time, it was the best card I had ever put inside my personal gaming system and I even upgraded my processor from a Ryzen 3 3 to a Ryzen 5 to make the most of this once upper mid-range GPU. At some point in the following years I sort of side graded to an i5-8400, another 6 core CPU that lacked hyper threading. I don't know why I did this but this chip first appeared in a GTX 570 revisit video before seemingly disappearing from the channel a few videos later, in favour of the Ryzen 3600. Despite only using the 8400 for a short period of time, it quickly became one of my favourite Intel CPUs and so I decided to rebuild the gaming PC I used on a daily basis over four years ago to see how good it is these days. Bear in mind that when I was using these parts, the i5 had already been out for a year and a half and the 1070 was almost three years old. In fact, the 2070 was already out. For the setup then, we have the 6-core i5-8400, 16 gigs of dual channel, 3200MHz DDR4, and a slightly different model of the 1070, not that it should make much of a difference these days. Can this combo still game? Well, let's find out. Let's start with Counter-Strike 2. This game is more CPU intensive and it certainly gives our i5-8400 a workout, but overall, performance figures were decent and the percentile lows reflect a fairly consistent experience. I found that CS2 seems to run smoother than CSGO did. While the average frame rate may not be as high as it was with the previous iteration of the game, there are less dips and drops. I'm using the lowest settings here as I don't feel the need to turn things up any higher in an online competitive FPS title. Next up we have Cyberpunk 2077 which has been completely overhauled thanks to recent updates and for me I think the performance has benefited especially with my older GTX 1070 here. This and the CPU will take turns in being the limiting factor so to speak with the 6 core i5 suffering in Night City and more densely populated areas even with crowd density set to its lowest along with everything else apart from textures. The lack of hyperthreading is noticeable here and the more powerful i7-8700 which also has 6 cores but 12 threads will put out better percentile figures. That said, the 8400 can be found for half the price here in the UK. For what is often less than £40, I think that's a good deal, providing you can find a reasonably priced 1151 motherboard too. A surprising result in terms of the average in Cyberpunk here, which sat at well over 60 FPS, proving that the 1070 is still pretty capable in certain titles. Elden Ring has by default a 60 FPS cap in place, but even so our average figures fell slightly short of that at 59. How annoying. The game wasn't all that consistent either, which I think may be because of the 8th gen i5. This title can take issue with older CPU architectures, at least that's what I found in my experience of testing it over the last year or so. I didn't expect to see full GPU utilisation either because of the aforementioned cap, but even so I think that the processor is still holding us back a bit here. Don't get me wrong, it is still more than playable, but taking on multiple enemies at once or venturing into action-packed areas may produce noticeable dips and drops. Nothing too severe however. Fortnite up next and I went for the low settings here for the same reason I did in CS2. I did however switch to far view distance and I enabled TAA. Although it's our GTX 1070 that is going to be the limiting factor here, the i5-8400's utilisation does occasionally spike to at least 90%, so Fortnite is definitely giving this 6 core CPU a workout. But overall this, what is now a fairly low cost gaming combo, works well together here. So far 16GB of RAM seems to be fine as well, but that is definitely the minimum I'd recommend going for with any PC build in 2023. Two 8GB sticks for dual channel, of course. 
When it comes to Forza Horizon 5, our i5-8400 is more than enough, as this game is more GPU intensive, as you can see by the utilisation on the left of the screen. The 1070 is enough for at least 60fps with the Ultra preset and TAA, but I think I'd probably drop down to high instead just to ensure that the 1% low was a little higher. There isn't much of a visual difference to be honest, but nice to see we can go up to Ultra with this aging configuration. I'd like to point out the low power consumption of the i5 as well, which I think is well worth a mention these days. I'm also using a £15 thermal right cooler I got from Amazon, which is doing a fine job at temperature control. GTA 5 next, and this is a much older title, but it's one that can still really push hardware when the graphical settings are turned right up. Here I've maxed everything out apart from MSAA which was off in favour of FXAA and I've also enabled all the advanced visual options. This resulted in a 78 FPS average but because we have a lot of NPCs on screen both walking and driving around, the percentile lows did drop below 60. This is due to the heavier load on the processor this time around which is fine for the most part but it'll certainly be pushed by GTA. As you can see the graphics card isn't being fully utilised here and to be honest going into this I wasn't expecting to see the i5 holding the 1070 back at all. At higher resolutions however the card will become the limitation likely across the board. The performance in Spider-Man Remastered was very good with over 90 FPS. I was expecting the CPU to struggle a little more, but to be honest we ran into a GPU limitation before anything else. In my opinion the 8400 and 1070 pairing is still a pretty solid one these days, despite the clear limitations that a lack of hyperthreading can have in some of the more CPU intensive games. I'm really glad I reassembled this old build as it's constantly reminding me why I liked this pairing so much. I think my main reason for switching back to Ryzen at the time, namely the 3600, was the 12 threads which made far lighter work of rendering videos, something that I of course prioritise. Red Dead Redemption 2 looks great at medium with medium TAA and ultra textures. Geometry LOD was set to max and grass LOD was set to 2 out of 10. Performance wise it's another plus 60 FPS experience at 1080p with the i5 and 1070 working well together. Outside of towns the processor is going to sit back a little bit but as we approach more densely populated areas the utilisation is going to peak above 90%. This doesn't seem to affect our performance numbers which were consistent over Overall. Time for a good laugh next as we fire up Starfield. The system isn't entirely to blame here as Starfield isn't exactly a shining beacon of optimization on Intel and Nvidia hardware. We're going to need low settings for the 1070's sake but the good news is that we can go for 60% or 70% dynamic res and our frame rates stay pretty much the same. I went for 60% res for this footage which is why it looks like a blurry mess in combination with FSR2 on this older graphics card. There will be moments whereby the i5 is pushed to its limits as well and I'd recommend a 30 FPS cap here to sort of ease the suffering. Frame dips and drops aren't as noticeable if you're only dropping from 30 to say 25 instead of 38 to 25. Things do get better outside of settlements but just be aware that 60 FPS is out of the question with this one. And I think we all expected that. With The Witcher 3 and its next gen patch applied, we're seeing respectable performance at Ultra with Hairworks off HBAO Plus and screen space reflections set to low. Here it's a similar story to what we see in other open world games where the GPU utilisation will decrease in busier areas due to the processor becoming more limited. There will be some dips below 60 FPS here, but overall it's more than playable. Turning certain settings down should help alleviate this, but I wanted to highlight any limitations that you might run into. As much as I like the i5-8400, it's probably more sensible to go with a 6-core Ryzen equivalent, one that will of course have 12 threads. AM4 boards are probably cheaper too, and more plentiful on the used market. Not to mention the upgrade path there is still fantastic. That said, the 6 core 6-thread 6 8400 is cheap and cheerful in 2023 and the 1070 will still do alright as well. It's important to manage expectations as it always is and some games won't be all that enjoyable, sometimes as the result of not so great optimization, and sometimes just because the game is straight up intensive. Alan Wake 2 is a good example of this and although I ended up deleting the footage by mistake, brilliant, it was no great loss, as even at 1080p with the lowest settings with FSR set to ultra performance, 
I was getting less than 25 FPS. This system isn't to blame though because I do believe we lack support for certain mesh shaders that this game uses and so older GTX cards are going to suffer regardless. Just thought I'd throw this one in here. As we move through 2023 there will be more and more examples of titles that this hardware combo won't agree with and others that it will play just fine. All I know is that this PC will always be one of my favourites even when or if it can no longer play games at all. This is my 4 year old mid range gaming system that was I suppose sort of a little bit old anyway when I built it but nice to see it's still doing alright these days. Let me know what you think of it down below in the comments of course, tell me about the hardware you're using as well, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and you want to of course and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.